So um, I feel like this might be a Kepler's law question. In fact, that's probably what the hint will say. Uh, yeah, in both parts, you should be writing the same equation. Yeah. So, so let me write down uh, Kepler's uh, Kepler's three laws. Or, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, so. This is all Kepler's law question. So maybe I'll be using the other laws in other questions. So let me just write them down. So Kepler's three laws. Now, um, so Kepler's laws, they don't actually tell you anything new um, because anything that Kepler's law, law tells you, you can derive using the mechanics you've learned so far, like conservation of angular momentum with uh, other things like um, the, the law of universal gravitation to drive them. So, so they don't tell you anything new, um, but at the same time, for the questions that are written for you to use Kepler's laws, they'll give you a shortcut. It'll give you a quick equation to plug in the numbers into. So the first law says uh, planet, uh, Kepler's laws of planetary motion. And in the lecture, I uh, made some uh, issue out of like why a uh, laws of planetary motion. Why not universal? Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's do that here. So first law says a planet orbit in ellipses or, or orbit in an ellipse for one planet uh, with sun at a uh, focus. One of the two foci. Right. Second law says, this is the one where it starts to get quantitative. So let me write down the quantitative version. Um, so if you, so I will write the version for the only situation well, where we'll be asking you questions in this lower division class, which is um, comparing speed at um, orbital speed at uh, perihelion and aphelion. So this would be free P and uh, free A. Um, and uh, <laughs> we'll use the letter RP and RA for the distances. Then this mathematical relationship holds. The product of the, the these two, the distance at the perihelion times the speed at perihelion is equal to the distance at aphelion times the speed at aphelion. Um, the version of Kepler's law that's stated is that the line connecting the sun to the planet, um, it sweeps out equal area in equal time. And uh, it follows from conservation of angular momentum. And all, for all the other points in the orbit, it can get a little bit complicated because you have to work at the lever arm and all that. But at the aphelion and the perihelion, where the distance you have is the lever arm, then this relatively simple statement holds. The third one is the, uh, that's the one that I always forget. Um, I, I, so let me just write it out and then if uh, it looks wrong, I'll correct it. So it involves the, uh, it's comparing two different orbits or, so, Newton's. Kepler's first and second law, they concern only a single planet. If you have a sun and one planet, you can apply these two. To apply Kepler's third law, you need at least two planets to compare them. So as you are looking at the orbital motion of a planet, uh, like, so here's the sun, and you are looking at orbit of two planets, uh, like Earth, Earth and Jupiter, for example, then um, you can look at two uh, quantities. You can look at the orbital period and you can look at the orbital distances. And Kepler's third law says that there's a relationship between the ratios of orbital distances and the ratios of orbital periods. And the relationship is, this is the one that I always forget. So let me just write it down and I'll correct it if I misremember something. So the, for example, the ratio of the larger orbit to smaller orbit is equal to, not the ratio, but I need to apply some power to that. 
ratio of the longer time over the shorter time. And one of them is a squared and the other one is cubed. So, um, so the Jupiter moves a slower than Earth does. So this ratio is going to be larger than this ratio. It's not a linear relationship, which means I think this ratio cubed should equal this ratio squared. So that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that the farther away you are, the not only does it take longer to orbit, which is what you would expect if they were moving at the same speed, but because they also move slower, they take even longer than same speed orbit would have taken. So, so with that, um, it says two planets orbit in circular orbit around the star have speeds this and this. Okay, answer your answer. Express your answers in fractional form, simplify it as much as possible. Okay, so it says, what well, is the ratio of the orbital red eye of the planet? So it looks like uh, I can use most of this, the Kepler's third law, with the only issue being it's, um, um, it's not in terms of the variables we are given, because we are given the speeds of the planets, not their orbital periods. Uh, oh, I can answer the second question more quickly. So wait, no, 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 because it still didn't give us the orbital uh, distance. So, um, so this is where, um, so uh, this is kind of the general problem solving approach. Uh, you have one piece of information that connects some of your potential unknowns and knowns, and you have other pieces of information like, okay, so the uh, speed A is equal to 3B, speed B is equal to 2B, and uh, staring at it, hopefully you see, oh, speeds, that's not related to any of this. <laughs> I need to be able to, um, I can plug this into any of these spots. So I need some way to relate them. Uh, that's where your knowledge of this mechanical setup is useful. And that's where my drawing of this uh, kind of helps me think through how can I relate orbital period with orbital radius? And maybe as you are thinking through it, you remember, oh, speed is distance divided by time. I have a symbol for orbital period. So if I'm thinking of distance, that in, in a circular orbit, that would be the circumference. So I can express the speed in terms of 2 pi times the radius divided by the period of orbit. So, so okay, I think I can write this down. I can say my, let me just move this over so I have, and scroll down a little. So I'm just gonna write this expression that I, hoping will help me relate the given information to whatever they are looking for. So I can write down, all right, so VA should be two pi times the orbital distance of A divided by orbital period of A. And similarly, VB is equal to two pi times orbital distance of B divided by period of B. Okay, so I'm looking, staring at these equations. Um, this one that I'll probably use. Um, and, and I guess I can just look at this and treat VB and VA as no. Uh, and I'm seeing that they are looking for the ratio of the orbital radii. So I don't want the orbital radii to be eliminated from my expressions, which means I probably should both of these for the orbital period. Then I can plug them into here. Um, so I'll have expression that doesn't do involve orbital period. And I'm hoping that things will cancel out and I can just uh, work out the numerical value of the answer that they're looking for. So we do that. Ready? Fractional form simplified. Uh, I hope it's going to work out. <laughs> Let's see. So let me uh, just uh, solve the this equation for TA. TA is equal to 2 pi RA over VA. And solve this for VB. That's going to, uh, sorry, TB. 
that's going to be uh, 2 pi r b over v b. Okay, I can imagine plugging both of these into a form of uh, Kepler's third law equation. Let me do that here. Um, the r a Oh, oh, wait, actually, they are wanting uh, RB over RA, so let me plug, uh, write it down that way. RB over RA is equal to the ratio of these two. This cubed is equal to ratio of these two. Uh, 2 pi RA over 3A over um, 2 pi RB over 3B. Uh, square. Oh, I see. Uh, there are some beautiful algebraic simplification that will happen. Uh, let me cancel out some things that will cancel out. Two pi's cancel out, so I don't have to keep writing them down. And here's the beautiful simplification that I see. Let me write this ratio separately. The RA over RB. So I have RA over RB raised to second power. And let me write out VA over, or 1 over VA over 1 over VB, which is uh, VB over VA raised to second power. And the beautiful simplification is that this cancels out two of the factors. Oh. <laughs> let me just to make the corrections here. This should have been B. This should have been A. So this should have been B, this should have been A, B, okay. So this cancels out two of the factors of this. And on the right, so whenever we, when we finish working out the right-hand side, that will give you RB over RA directly. We don't have to uh, do, take any cube root or anything like that. So finishing the right-hand side, we have VA, which uh, is going to be 3V over uh, VB, which is 2V raised to power of 2. So Vs cancel out. So we have 3 squared over 2 squared, or uh, I guess 9 over 4. So once we have that, that um, RB over RA is equal to 9 over 4. We can use that information uh, directly in Kepler's third law to let me just uh, rewrite this with B, A, and B, A. Directly use that 9 over 4 ratio here to solve for the ratio of the periods. So uh, let me just do it here. So I have the ratio of the orbital radii. Um, let me see if I can do uh, the numerator and denominator separately. So for the numerator, I have 9 to the third power, and then square root it. I think that's going to give me a whole integer. Uh, okay, 27. And for the denominator, I have 4 raised to third power, square root it. Um, you know, raised to third power, and since I'm getting inside here, I need to take square root. Um, eight. Okay, I think that's gonna work out. So, yeah, that's it. Um, a little bit more involved than I thought at first, uh, but fairly reasonable, I think. <laughs> Let me do the next two uh, more quickly than this one. Um,